Welcome everyone to our presentation today, questions and answers to any new uh, interested uh, people joining us today, welcome. And for all of you who have been very loyal to the program and dedicated to our teaching, welcome. Vital Life Energy Formers does not treat, diagnose, cure or profess a cure of any sort of disease. I'm gonna ask the first question because Jeff will come back with the answer. A lot of, well, a lot of people are um, having a lot of pressure to have the vaccine from family members and friends and colleagues and work. And there's a lot of pressure for a lot of people about the vaccine and a lot of people not wanting to have the vaccine. So Jeff has a, a way to be able to help strengthen you so that you can feel comfortable to share with whoever's putting the pressure on you if you do not want to have the vaccine. It's not saying that those who have had the vaccine that they've done you know, anything necessarily bad. It's not anything like that. It's just in, if you're not wanting to do it in a way to be able to help you to strengthen your, you when somebody's putting pressure on you to have the vaccine. Yeah, it's it's honestly understandable that uh, the people that have had the vaccine and also all the information going out about the vaccine, that they would want you also to have the vaccine too in order to feel comfortable and, and be with family members or just to be able to feel that you're being safe with the COVID-19. So there isn't anything negative about what they're doing or feeling. It's just their sincerity and their kindness to want to be able to, that you be safe also with COVID-19. The situation is this, is that the COVID-19 is actually a spike protein, which is different in relationship to basic viruses that we normally have all the way back to the original SARS virus back some, uh, to 2002. And there's many, many forms of the SARS virus and, and the most important part of what we're able to do with everything we teach and what we, we are able to explain to you is that we're able to produce a vaccine and an immunity, our natural immunity, to all the different forms of the SARS virus, plus any future SARS viruses that will come in a year or two or next week. So this is the part that's really beautiful about our understanding and our work is we've been utilizing our this work and understanding for 30 plus years, and I'm gonna explain more about that too. There is a video that I watched, because um, I was researching this, and it's on YouTube. And I'll tell the person's name. And if you wanna write this down, you can. Uh, he, he's a very beautiful doctor. Uh, I, I, I just, he's a very sincere man. He's a Christian doctor. And his name is Dr. James. Uh, and the next is Markham, M-A-R-C-U-M. And um, he's a uh, cardiologist uh, here in the United States and a specialist. And um, can you spell he's it? A Can you okay, spell it's, it? yeah, it's James, his first name, James Markham, M-A-R-C-U-M. I also, I, I text it to you, Lorraine. Um, and this is the, the, the video is uh, why I haven't yet had the COVID-19 vaccine. So a lot of his patients and people listening to him on YouTube has asked him this question, so he then wanted to answer it. And uh, the, one of the things to understand is that in relationship to the virus, you can actually test the virus um, and, and get, go to the doctor and they can actually test for if you had the virus in the past, like he had the uh, SARS-2 back in some 12 to 20 years ago, and he's actually had that vaccine, immunity to that back then, to the SARS viruses. So he actually then also had uh, immunity to the COVID-19. And um, it was really amazing. That's what he's saying is that if we've had the virus before, which I know I have back, back in 2002, I had the virus, my family had the virus. And so we all, we can, you can also test to find out if that's a fact. If you've had this virus in the past and whether you have immunity to it. For those, um, and for those of you who are new to our teaching, COVID-19 is the original SARS 
from 2002, 80% of COVID or Corona-19 is SARS. And that's what Jeff's explaining about with the different strains of SARS viruses and coronaviruses. There's so many different strains of viruses. Exactly. And so then what he's been able to do is he was able to see that he actually had that and then actually built up immunity to the COVID-19 and also he had the virus uh, activated again as a, as a medical doctor and seeing patients. He also saw that he had then uh, had the virus again and that quadrupled his immunity. And so when you actually watch this video and like that, if you wanna find out about his experience and his way of being able to understand his particular protection to the virus, because what he feels now is because he's actually has built up immunity, had it again, and he built up even more immunity to it, that, that he feels really uh, good about himself and what he's done because he now has immunity for other, other, vir uh, other, other, other SARS viruses that'll be in the future. And so the beautiful thing about what we do in our program is we were boosting up the immune system, which is manufactured in the bone marrow and goes to the colon and then goes up his lungs and to the brain and so on. And that immune system act activates the uh, white blood cells, the NK uh, white blood cells that fights viruses and infection. So we're constantly able to able to fight any changes to the virus by the program and everything we do. And so the situation is this is a way that was, if you want to find out, you can go to, the, to the, listen to the video because he's very clear. He's a beautiful man, like I said, that will actually show you the different things he's done and, and the testing because he tested himself and also has information about other uh, uh, doctors and like that, that, that also have you tested and understand this relationship to the COVID-19. So what, what this means is you can test and get tested and see exactly where your immunity is, whether you've had the virus in the past, how many uh, immune cells that you actually have to fight that virus. And so he has a whole lot of them himself. So that's the reason he feels very confident in relationship to the uh, COVID-19. He also recognizes that the COVID-19 itself is in a vaccine. He's not an anti-vaxxer. He's not anti-vaccine. He just feels that he wants, because he has a healthy man, he's, he takes certain nutrients um, and so on to be able to strengthen his immune system. Um, and so he wants to be able to utilize his immune system to recognize any future future pathogens, future viruses. Um, the other part that what he's actually sharing is in relationship to the spike protein. You see, your immune system, our immune system is able to recognize all different forms of viruses. That's our natural immune, immunity. When we get the vaccine, it's a, uh, a spike protein. So what a spike protein, which is this new in relationship to vaccines, and the, the vaccines that they're putting out right now that people are getting all over the world is a spike protein. So what a spike protein does, it works on this single virus. So it works with COVID-19. So it goes directly into the brain and activates the virus to recognize in the cells, RNA or DNA, depending on which vaccine you get. And so that actually activates the bias recognition of the COVID-19. It does not recognize any derivatives of the corona-19 or other SARS viruses that can mutate. And so this is the, one of the reasons that he was so wanting to know exactly where he stood because he wanted to see if in the future, if he did, did not need or get the vaccine, would he have immunity for other SARS vaccine because he's a scientist and a doctor, he knows it will mutate and so on. So that was one of the things that I wanted to be able to share for people that would like to know exactly where they stand where they've had the vaccine, or sorry, had the virus in the past, where they had it 20 years ago or 12 years ago, that can also be tested. And whether you, the level of uh, antibodies and uh, white blood cells and T cells, so you can test the T cells you have in your system, which the T cells mature into the uh, uh, white blood cells, the NK killer cells. So the more T cells you have, the stronger immunity you have. And that's one of the things that we build up in the program because all these single amino acids that we're taking together 
and all the nutrients, the non-essential nutrients, go directly into the bone marrow. And that activates the T cells, stem cells, white blood cells, and red blood cells to, to activate your immune system. So did I answer what I needed to answer? Yes, thank you. So we'll take questions now. Andy, did you want to ask your question? Just give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I can yeah. unmute myself. Yeah, there we go. Yes, you can. I see that, Andy. <laughs> Oops. Um, I'm going to sing. Um, yeah, that kind of answered it. I, it made me think of a couple of other things as well, which is um, if, if a virus is in the environment, is it not sort of impossible to not actually have the virus? Um, the, 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 okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, Andy. I'll, I'll answer that, but go ahead. And the other question was, with it being an airborne virus now, does that mean that viruses will pretty much always exist as an airborne virus as well now? No, the answer, okay, second answer is no. Right. What makes okay. this particular virus different is how we uh, uh, got exposed to it. Okay, okay. That's, that's the reason this is different. Now, as children, as babies crawling around, again, one of the mo most important things to understand about this situation for all of us and about viruses, they're parasitical, they're parasites. Mm. And so when you're down there digging the dirt and as a child, a baby crawling around, eating the dirt, there's gonna be parasites in that dirt. And then in that parasite, it's gonna be the viruses. So we naturally, as human beings, get exposed to, to the, when we have the strongest immune system, our strongest immune system is that by full development of our immune system is by the age of three. And so that's when the brain is fully developed. And so that's when the immune system is the strongest. That's the reason with the COVID-19 specifically, the children, the babies, the young adults have the strongest immunity compared to elderly people or older people that have lost their immune system, weakened from all the chemical and all the toxin in their lifestyle by the age of 50, 60, 70, 80, and so on. But, <laughs> I smile because I'm 73, but you can build up your natural immune system through our program and through amino acids and our full program of recognizing it, where I can look in the eye and see where the, the pathogens are activating or any toxins exposed there because we're seeing the full relationship of the circulation of the immune system to, to the full activation of our brain or our body. So then we can adjust the program accordingly and keep building back up the, the immune system itself. So the, the answer is, is that we have many different forms of viruses and certain viruses are directly related to the SARS virus. Um, we have the, the shingles virus, the polio virus. It's all different forms of viruses at different times and also at different times when when there's a lot of chemical exposure. So the example is, is that the SARS virus itself that we first came in contact understanding it specifically in a world stage was in 2002 when the Hong Kong flu activated and they called that the bird flu. And that's what Lorraine was referring to. 80% okay, of the SARS COVID-19 is SARS. And like, you know, like when you read about it or study about it, you'll see there's many different SARS viruses. And this is the SARS-2. And the vaccine that we're, that's been put together with a spike protein is the SARS-2 virus, along with a derivative. And I'll, and I'll explain that derivative. So what makes this, the bird flu, it, it, it's in chemical. Xenoestrogenous region, the virus activates in all these cities around the world where there's lots of population and lots of pollution because the virus activates and lives in chemical xenoestrogen which is the pollution uh, and that's the excess estrogen and that's also the estrogen that's in the birds so that's the reason the SARS virus was called the bird flu because the birds would could carry the virus from one part of the world to another part of the world 
So at that time we were telling people, please don't eat any chicken, veal, pork, or turkey, and saliva can transmit the virus. It was not airborne. So what makes this particular virus, di go ahead, Larry. Usually children are, you know, like when we deal with the flu, usually children are the carrier of the flu, right? The children get it, you know, they're in contact and they're slobbering over each other, you know, they're picking up this, it's going in their mouth. So usually children are the carriers of flu and they give it to the adults. This is different than a regular flu. Yeah, so that's the reason this is the SARS virus, which makes it different than the flu virus. So that's the different viruses that you were asking. And so in this particular virus, it actually is attached to chemical xenoestrogen and it, it lives in estradiol or estrogen and, and it activates and spreads that way. So you had to literally get the mucus to spread the SARS virus. Now what's happened is because of whatever they've done in a part of the world, in the lab there, which is pretty much being documented as this is where this occurred. And that is, is that they were testing the different viruses and they were testing the herpes simplex, which I'm gonna go into more detail about the herpes. So, they're in, they, so what they did is they take the SARS virus, which they know was heavily infectious, then added in the herpes simplex, which the herpes simplex is actually in the cerebral spinal fluid. It's in the bone marrow. So that's the reason when you get a stress situation, the virus activates you and get a cold sore in the genitivary in their mouth or in the, in the genitivary down below. So that, that by attaching the SARS virus, which is with high levels of estrogen and chemical, attaching the herpes simplex to it, which then goes into the bloodstream. Very significant, because I'll explain to more what that means. So by going to the bloodstream, then the virus can then activate into the air. So it becomes an airborne pathogen. And not only that, the SARS virus, instead of being bigger, it's now minuscule, it's even smaller. So these masks that people are having and saying it's gonna prevent the virus is it's too small because it's airborne. So that means it can go into the atmosphere, can be picked up by the clouds, go to different parts of the world, rain, and that dirt and that virus, because viruses are in dirt, they can come down and then basically move around the world that way. And so versus before the birds had to carry it, in this case, the, the, the actual clouds can actually carry it and move it through the jet stream in different parts of the world, along with flying in airplanes and everything else that people are very much aware of. So the situation here is that this has now become, so the most important part to understand is that viruses cannot live in red blood cells. Viruses cannot live in oxygen because we as human beings make red blood cells in the bone marrow, make red blood cells in the liver, and then transport those blood, sorry, the red blood cells through the entire blood system and also the lymph system. And by, by doing so, that carries the oxygen because this pathogen can only live in dirt. It can only live in chemical. It cannot, it can live in carbon dioxide. It cannot live in oxygen. We as human beings activate with oxygen. Plants need the carbon dioxide. We need the oxygen. The plants give us the oxygen, that's nature. So nature gives us the oxygen. We give the carbon dioxide and that's the balance that occurs in nature. The problem today is, and through the pollution levels, we've produced a whole lot more xenoestrogens chemical. And then the pathogen, the viruses that can actually attach to the chemical so that's the reason the viruses are very active those, in the large cities. For those of you who are new, xenoestrogen is chemical mimics estrogen. In our liver, it's foreign chemical, is foreign to our liver. So our liver then mimics estrogen from the chemical. So that's why it's airborne, it's because it attaches to the chemical and carries in the chemical. And the cities where there's heavy pollution are the areas that are getting more affected by this pathogen. When Jeff's sharing about the dirt, viruses are parasitical and they constantly mutate. And there's questions coming up, up about the shedding of, you know, people getting vaccinated and the shedding of it. 
Well, parasites eliminate and they eat up their own infection. So when we hear about a shedding, it's actually the bactrim, the bacteria from the pathogen that a person's being affected by. Sorry. To and the, be the, the beautiful thing is, is that we, through our program and starting to think about the bacteria, we can reduce the bacteria so that that virus could, has a less ability to be able to spread. Go ahead, Lorraine. Just want to share that one. Oh, that's good. We have another question, unless you need to finish something. You're going to yeah, no, I want, yeah, you know, I want to explain because we're dealing with the bloodstream and we're dealing with viruses and we're dealing with the herpes simplex. And we're also dealing with the understanding of irregular cells because viruses activate irregular cells in the body. So most of us think of the irregular cells in relationship to cancer. And cancer is basically underlying cause of the cancer is a burning from the virus. And in this case, remember I said the virus is in the blood and transmits that way. So if we have more oxygen in the blood, our immune system is able to neutralize the pathogen and reduce the bacteria that the pathogen is releasing because it remember it's parasitical, it releases the bacteria. That bacteria spreads the virus to another part of the body. Just like a cancer cell can activate and spread to other parts of the body. So this will actually give you some understanding of the relationship, which is of course our years of understanding of viruses and understanding the relationship to irregular cells and understanding our immune system. Because that's just being when they're dealing with a vaccine, the one thing they're not talking about is, that, is our own individual immune system and how our immune system, if we've had the virus in the past like this doctor will explain to you when you listen to him. If you had the virus in the past, you would then have your innate immunity. Now, quite a few people like here in the States and around the world, back in, uh, for myself, it was December 19, 2019, I, I got the, the pathogen, got very ill. And so therefore I build up immunity to that. And so therefore I have, I have a natural immunity which if you want, you can test it, which is what we're sharing to prove that you, you do have it, or you can find out if you really do or not. And so therefore, because of that natural immunity, about 25% to 30% of the people here in the United States have had the pathogen, have had the virus, or maybe even 40%. So they actually have a natural immunity to the COVID-19. So now, what I want to share that relates to this with the relation of the blood, from what I'm sharing, just a second here, and, and that's the word leukemia. Now, leukemia we know is a cancer of the blood. So I'm going to read this to you. Leukemia is a disorder involving blood cells. Remember, oxygen, red blood cells, neutralizes the pathogen, the virus. So the more red blood cells we produce, the more immunity we have, the more we are able to filter out the chemical and the virus in the blood, or also in this case, the leukemia. So it says leukemia is a disorder involving blood cells. Healthy cells form in the bone marrow, something we teach a lot about because we need 90 essential amino acids to go into our bone marrow to manufacture our immune cells, T cells, stem cells, white blood cells, and red blood cells. So it says here, healthy cells form in the bone marrow and mature into red blood cells and deliver oxygen as nutrients to the body's tissues. This is your innate immune system. White blood cells to fight infections and blood platelets to stop bleeding. So if you haven't got platelets, you, platelets, you just bleed. The, the platelets are manufactured in the bone marrow along with the white blood cells, along with the T cells, along with the stem cells. And, and, and so, so now it says here, what is the factors that are linked to leukemia? a personal family or history of leukemia and blood disorders. So in other words, you can have genetically genes or amino acids. So you could have a weakened condition in relationship genetically to because if there was leukemia in one of your family members or great grandparents and so on. Prior treatment to radiation or chemotherapy. So as we get exposed to radiation or we're exposed to chemotherapy, or you've had that in the past, you have more risk of having leukemia. 
Now remember, we're not treating a disease. It's not we're saying we're treating, we're teaching you about the immune system. And we're, we're saying we do not treat diseases and we don't, we didn't not profess a cure of any disease. But I'm expressing to you about how leukemia is a virus. So exposure to radiation or certain chemicals, including benzone, ben, benzene, formaldehyde, and Agent Orange. Well, formaldehyde's in all of these vaccines that we're getting. Benzene's in those vaccines that we're getting. Radiation is, 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 uh, is in the atmosphere. So then it then said infections with specific viruses, such as Epstein virus and human T cells lymphoma or leukemia. So, in other words, the herpes simplex, the Epstein Barr virus, which activates the chronic fatigue, that's the reason a lot of people, either when they get the vaccine or have the virus, are very fatigued. Way back in the 30 years ago, when we we're in Manly and so on, one of the first things that we were dealing with our program with amino acids was chronic fatigue. And the chronic fatigue is the Epstein Barr virus. So, within this vaccine, sorry, within the COVID 19, it's 80% SARS, 30% of the estradiol, estrogen chemical, and then the, the Epstein-Barr virus attached to it. And that's what made it go airborne. So that means that when you go on, when you get stressed out, the virus activates the bloodstream and the virus weakens the immune system. So then it starts feeding bacteria, okay, in the colon and it's burning. And then that bacteria in the colon, the villi that's there that release the oxygen gets dried up, become a tube. That same infection that's burning now is the virus. It then goes into our lungs, starts burning the lungs. The body starts releasing the liquid and that's the pneumonia. So the villi starts to dry up, lack of oxygen in the lungs, then goes in the brain. And of course, that's the situation that people have been struggling with. So they have to be put on oxygen on ventilators and so on, and hope their immune system at some time will switch on or they will pass. The, the actual ventilators don't work because the blood is, because the villi is, is drying out and that's what absorbs the nutrients into the bloodstream. So the blood contains more uric acid and then that uric acid causes inflammation. And then the inflammation then causes the blood to coagulate. So that's the reason actually in Russia, they did research on actually the virus itself causing a Bactrim and not treating the patients with positive tests to COVID and getting lung, you know, the respiratory infection. They actually treated them with anti-inflammatories and blood thinners instead of putting them on ventilators. So that's the reason it's, making sure you make more red blood cells, all right? It's, it's helping to switch on the parasympathetic nerves to reduce the inflammation. When we're under stress, constant stress, then we're not stimulating the parasympathetic nerves to relax. So anti-inflammatory, a natural anti-inflammatory is relaxation. Okay, Ray, any other questions now? Uh, Joy, would you like to ask the question? I'm just going to allow you to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's been a, a lot of um, dialogue on social media, um, as well as just in my own networks regarding um, um, the shedding, which you briefly touched on, but that women's uh, menstruation uh, really changing in relationship to how many people have had the vaccine. And that's very evident in my own family. Um, and also uh, women miscarrying more. Um, so it'd be great to get some information on uh, what you think might be occurring. Well, the, the, Joy, thank you. That's a very good question. And I'm sorry for the, what this experiences you had, family have been having to go through. What we're dealing with, remember we're dealing with the herpes simplex and the herpes simplex burns. And what happens is because it's a spike protein, okay, whether it's RNA or DNA protein, it, then what it does, it actually now, 
because the woman cycles, it actually dries up the ovulation and the removal of the bacteria, which is normally in your cycle. So what's happening now is, is that the actual virus is actually activating within the cervix and within the actual lining. And that's the burning that's occurring, which is, and that's the reason it's affecting women's cycle and particularly younger women now because of their cycle and because the body's ability to try to remove that out, but it's actually burying the lining. And that's the reason, you know, serious situations have occurred. I didn't even want to say in this uh, video, you can research that yourself, that have occurred. A lot of women have now had excessive bleeding, uh, the, like you said, Joy, and like that. Now, the, the thing that we're able to do is to help any cycle, and the female cycle, is to actually build up, back up the oxygen levels, activate the antibodies to the herpes simplex virus. Okay, we can do that with amino acids to help balance that out. And then and activate the whole circulation, rehydrating the womb, rehydrating the ovaries, and rehydrate in the lining. And to build back up your natural immunity and stop that inflammation and build up the circulation. Because every female, all of us have a 28 day cycle. Every female ovulates recognizes any virus, mold, fungus, or chemical or physical or emotional stress, then bleeds that out. So we're very much able to, to help that situation with our program and what we do. So Does that answer your question, Joy? Yes, thank you. Yeah, because You're thank very you. very welcome, Joy. Because, because thank you so much for the question. Because they it, uh, It'll help a lot of people, thank you. Because they're younger, Joy, is the reason that you're seeing, you know, uh, the immune system and the ovulation works together. So because younger people have a strong immune system and because the actual uh, the RNA, the spike protein that happens, then the other immune cells drop, but they're younger, so their immune system's stronger. So the body's actually pushing out the actual uh, bact bacteria from the shedding or you know, that people are being exposed to. So actually pushing it out, that's the bleeds. That's also part of the miscarriages, which, you know, is sad, but you know, that's, that's part of it too. It's actually the immune system is stronger in the younger people and it's actually using that channel in order to remove the toxin. Mm -hmm. See, the part of what Lorraine's actually explaining, Joy, too, is that we're dealing with a spike protein, which has been asked by Andy and uh, other people. The spike protein means it's a single protein that recognizes only the COVID-19. So because the body actually goes to all the COVID-19, but actually weakens the immune system, our natural innate immune system that recognizes everything else. So it keeps focusing on COVID-19 only and doesn't focus on any other pathogens. And so therefore that's the reason that this condition is occurring. Now in younger people, normally it's older people because of what Lorraine just said with the ovulation and the bleed, and the miscarriage and so on, that's occurring because of that situation, because it only can deal with the COVID-19. It, it actually weakens the immune system, which is please understand for all of us, and it, men and women, we have a 28 day cycle. That's where we build up our immunity. In that cycle, when the woman ovulates, the woman doesn't have this, the same level of immune cells to re reduce that infection. And that's the reason for the burning and the bleed or the miscarriage. And please forgive me, it's common sense. So Joy, for yes. your family, right? For your family um, to help, you know, obviously with their cycles. You know, aloe vera is, is very important for females right now. Aloe vera, um, if they're intimate, is using aloe vera, right? If they're actually intimate uh, with their partner using aloe vera drinking aloe vera, aloe vera juice, putting it into water. If they're taking the amino acid program, adding it to the amino acid drink, the aloe vera will take care of the burning of the herpes simplex. So remember when I was telling you about the, the, the leukemia, the aloe vera is an amino acid that relates to lysine. Lysine actually neutralizes the breakout from the herpes. People have actually utilized lysine when a person's broken out with herpes. So that's the aloe vera. That's what Lorraine's talking about. Aloe vera is a natural form of lysine in the plant. Thank 
to anyone else. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, yes, I have another one, please, Lorraine and Jeff. Good. Um, once again, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Um, just uh, following on from my last question, uh, there's a lot of fear being generated between people that have been vaccinated and people who choose not to be vaccinated. And the latter group um, seem to be fearful about being around vaccinated people for the reasons that we're talking about. Um, so, um, so I guess what you're saying is that um, just make sure um, that uh, we're all really healthy and our immune systems are very strong. Um, but this is a very polarizing time. And I just wondered, um, you know, what, what advice you might give. Um, you yeah, know, Joy, thank you. The situation is this, see, we, we, it's really interesting, we, I know, interesting to me, because you have the people that actually have the vaccine. And then they're, you know, they we're told that people that don't have the vaccine could give the person the virus which is act the COVID-19. The answer is that's absolutely what, very, very minuscule opportunity of, of them spreading the virus from, from another person that already has a vaccine because the body will recognize the COVID-19. So if the other person has the COVID-19, they, they have the recognition of that virus, not immunity, but recognition to that virus. And then when you're dealing with the people that have the vaccine and you're dealing with you know, someone that has not had the vaccine. And, and because of it actually going into and it's creating more bacteria, as Lorraine explained, because it's a virus, a pathogen. So it, it actually creates, you know, it's a, a parasite it, it, and that's how it spreads, it sheds. Now, if you have a good immune system, no worries. The immune system immediately will recognize that as any other uh, bacteria, the immune system is strength, strong, it recognizes it. And remove this. There's no, absolutely nothing to fear. The but, the but the people that are not clear on that or have a weakened immune system, the yes, that can be a problem. So there's two factors here, which is really honestly to me, it's it's amazing. A person gets a vaccine for COVID-19, and then they're afraid that people that are mixing with the people that don't have the vaccine. Well, I thought that COVID-19 vaccine is supposed to stop any. COVID-19 from spreading as well, it does. It's just, it's just another way of creating more fear with people, Joy. Mm, and yeah. you know, that seems to be a, a situation that is to manipulate certain folks around the world. Yes. Yes, th thank you. Thanks very much for that. Uh, the other thing I want to say too, as far as like with pollution, because that's what we're dealing with, because the virus actually activates and spreads with pollution chemical. Uh, one of the things that we utilize in our program, amino acids have carbon. And so that carbon is the lining. So that will stop any pathogen to go into the bloodstream is carbon. Charcoal is, uh, is carbon. We recommend people to utilize uh, charcoal because the chemical is then absorbed through the ch charcoal and removed other by, you know, and so on. So therefore that means also if we have high levels of amino acids is carbon in our intestine, and also we're taking charcoal, then that's going to be prevented to lower the exposure to any virus, whether that's a, a children's virus is spreading or whether it's COVID-19 or another form of the SARS virus. So there's a question. Yeah, uh, Lorraine, you know, why, why are they intending to vaccinating, vaccinating children? Well, I, I really, yeah. Be the dangers of kids having the vaccine. That's okay. The, yeah, the, the, the answer to this, and I have to be quite, you know, this is going to go on YouTube. <laughs> I have to be smart in my relationship to answering that question. The part to understand is, and that is, is this, is that because COVID-19 affects older people that do not have the natural antibodies, 
and people who have the natural immune system, it actually is able to be removed and have immunity to it. So it does not survive in oxygen and does not survive with natural immunity. Now, younger people from three onwards up to basically 18, even up to 25, but we'll go up to 18, that's when we have the most hormone production between 18 and 25 as a male. So anyway, from that age group, as you get older, okay, from that age group, you actually have natural immunity. So if you didn't get the vaccine, yes, you will suppress the natural immunity that you have as being a young person. Now, if that was true, this is what's, what's to me, what, what, what one of the services that we have, which is many, we can help anyone where if the child for whatever reason has to have the vaccine, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter the reason, there's good reasons, there's not so good reasons, it doesn't matter. What does matter is we wanna help that child and we wanna help that child's immunity. When you activate our program with amino acids, we naturally make straight away in the bone marrow because that's where our immune system starts. The immune system starts in the bone marrow. So amino acids go directly in the bone marrow, start releasing the white blood cells, T cells and so on. So it can counteract the switch, switching on the COVID-19 and switching off the immune system. So whether you have had the vaccine, which we've had a number of people have had the vaccine, one of the things that we can do is we, as soon as they keep the program up the way we recommend it, they start building up their natural immunity, even though their body is dealing with a spike protein, the body starts switching on the natural immunity. So we can actually remove those dead cells out that were naturally being suppressed by the COVID-19 as a spike protein. So in over a period of time, you can actually remove the infection through the cerebral spine fluid up through the, all the glands up into the pineal, pituitary, thyroid, thymus, adrenals, testes, ovaries, cervix, uterus. So is it a problem? Very big so. <laughs> big so, Jeff, big so. Yes, is a problem. And we're here to help everybody. There's another question. Oh, hi, Jeff and Lorraine, it's Max. Hi, Max. Hi. Max. hi. Um, I know you addressed shedding a little bit earlier, but it was not entirely clear to me um, whether shedding from vaccinated to unvaccinated people is real. And so if it is real, the program just takes care of it and it's not a worry or because, you know, I, I hear about uh, shedding and there's some people uh, who, who, who don't even want to be near me because I'm unvaccinated. <laughs> I'm with people who are vaccinated. So they think, well, you're getting shedded on and you're actually worse than the people who have been vaccinated. I, I tell you, there's so, there's, there's so much fear going around. It's 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 this. It's as uh, contagious as other viruses. That's how I can say it, Max. So the, the, the situation, first of all, just understand, the actual shedding is the bacteria that comes from the virus. It poos. Mm -hmm. And so therefore your natural immune system will remove that poo. Now look, we, we're, ha we're, pollu we're around pollution all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that same bacteria is the pollution that would be releasing. So we can then, through our program and through everything we do, reduce that. And, and the other thing to understand is that a person that has had the vaccine and a person that doesn't, you're not shedding the virus. Your immune system is removing it. You're not, you're not there isn't bacteria like that shedding in you or any person that, that hasn't been vaccinated. The, the actual shedding occurs in a person that has switched on the RNA spike protein or DNA spike protein and switched off the body's ability to remove the bacteria. When, when you're taking your, your drinks, the amino acids, the nutrients, the clay and so on, that's absorbing all the bacteria. But again, it, it, it's, you know, here in America, they call it fake news. So, so people who have the vaccine, are they shedding that to to those of us who do not have it or is that the just answer all? is yes the answer is yes the answer is yes it it, it does okay the, but, <laughs> but if you you might already max have a natural immunity all right okay okay 
So you can test that from where they found this doctor. You can go find out. And then you can say, look, I've been tested. I have such an immune system. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. No, don't be afraid of me. Okay. So that's what I'm giving now. There's enough science out there, enough people that have the same feelings and this thing as we do. As this very beautiful, very, I mean, this man is beautiful. I, I really, he's a God-fearing man. He's a Christian. And he's just really very good at how he explains it for himself and sharing that, that because he has, you know, obviously, and he is being a doctor and cardiologist, he has a lot of people that have had the vaccine and saying, why doctor, do you not have the vaccine or, or others, other doctors around him? So he had to find the science to be able to feel comfortable both for himself, but also to share the science and the reason his science is, is science itself. So the answer is yes, they are shedding, but your immune system max for our immune system already is dealing with bacteria and infection all the time anyway, so from pollution. That's, on, that's had the vaccine that's on the program, right? Because they are regenerating the bone marrow, the stem cells, the T cells, the red and white blood cells, they are not shedding, you see? Yeah. They're like you, us, you know, removing the bacteria, removing the pathogen. Building Absolutely. A building a defense. So, so they're safer around you, mate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just Thank you so much. You say, give me a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Max. The question it's a pleasure. Peter is um, is it okay to use charcoal powder with the amino acids? The, the answer is that absolutely. Um, the when when we're utilized the amino acids are carbon. And so therefore that's the lining of our small and large intestine. And that's what keeps the, the nutrients to go into the bloodstream and the poisons to go out. So when you use charcoal, you're just boosting your absorption of the amino acids. So the answer is definitely yes. Let's see. Charcoal does not absorb the nutrients. Remember, if you just think of this from a practical standpoint, the lining is carbon. So charcoal is a natural lining. So nature puts that lining of carbon so that the nutrients can go in the bloodstream and not burn the blood, not create the virus in the blood leukemia, as an example, or COVID-19 or SARS or any virus. So that, I mean, if you're around chemical, first thing you do, we take the charcoal. Okay, Did I answer your question, Peter? Another question. Um, I've, okay. just, I've just unmuted. I don't know who that is, 475059. I've unmuted you. So just your sp speaker is on mute. Us, I've just asked you to unmute. Is that me, Lorraine? Yes. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Janice. Hello, Jeff. You're telling me to unmute? <laughs> <laughs> Th thank you. That's a very nice uh, comment, Janice. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you so much to both of you and Lynn for all the work that you've done. Um, and to explain to us, for us oldies, sometimes you've got to speak a little bit slower when you're explaining some very delicate matters, uh, if you don't mind. But um, your program has helped me uh, so much. Now, very quickly, um, you said that we can go to the doctor to get our levels checked to see what viruses we've had. Is that right? Yes. You just go and ask, excuse me, hello, can you please No, but, no but Jan Janice, what to do is watch the video. That, that's the reason you watch the video. That's going to give you more detail and more answers of what we're, I'm sharing. That's the reason we, you can, you know, we've given you, we'll give you the information. If not, the information is there. It's on this video itself. So yes, uh, okay. watch that video. Yep. Yep, very quickly again, in Australia, we're quite fortunate. We're very slow at giving out the vaccine, which is um, uh, a very good thing as far as I'm concerned. But 
um, my um, my daughter might have to have the injection because of her work. She's trying to hold off, but it's either going to be one thing or the other. So are you still okay. saying the AstraZeneca instead of the Pfizer? No. No. What are you saying, Jeff? I'm saying they both are spike proteins. They both have different effects. Yes, I remember you saying the Pfizer uh, affects the brain barrier. Um, yes, it, it would also through, again, at that particular time, I was de dealing with the Pfizer RNA vaccine. All right. And because the RNA vaccine is, is quite unique and new. And so therefore that activates the spike protein and then switches off the immune cells. What we've learned after doing this, that the same DNA, because it's a spike protein, has the same effect, but affects the body in a different way. Ah. Uh, so both are spike proteins. Right, so are you saying- Well, wait, just one sec, one, one sec. Uh, what I mean by that, just if you can just go understand, every cell, okay, yeah has an RNA and DNA, two different cells, right? Yep. Polarity, yin-yang, male-female. So they have to communicate to each other. They affect the body that way. So when you're dealing with a spike protein, one vaccine deals with the RNA and the other vaccine deals with the DNA. Ah. Uh, so okay. they're both spike, means they're single. They're not, yeah, they're single. That's what makes it different. That's the reason this is new. Uh, we're all being tested. Now we, uh, lot, the whole world that gets the vaccine is being tested with it. And normally this situation, as we all know, for the FDA here in America, the vaccine has to go through a rigorous testing on animals before it even goes to humans. And then, then it, and that's usually about a four, five years, and sometimes eight, 10 years before they approve it. Mm. But that, Not six that months. Yeah, that hasn't been done, has it? No, that's the reason everyone that is getting the vaccine, which we're learning because mm. of our experience, because people have to get it, just like your daughter might have to get it. Mm. So then what we've learned is, is that when a person gets it, and if they immediately go on the program, re, you know, really well, in other words, four times a day with, the, you know, taking the amino acids, the program four times a day, which works with the immune system, the bone marrow, doing the other part of the program, the castro packs, you know, the, the, the foot baths and so on, the, and then paying attention to their diet, then their immune system switches right back on and starts removing the bacteria as if the pathogen wasn't even given. Right, good, thanks for that. And last question, my daughter- Excuse me, no, excuse me. Yes. That's one reason I want to do our very best this to get out to so many people. Yes, you know, of course. Or, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Next time. No, no, you can you can ask a question, Janice. Oh, go ahead, Janice. My yep. daughter-in-law is pregnant. She's uh, six and a half months pregnant. Of course, she never got the vaccine. Very, very careful about where she goes, what she does, everything. She doesn't go anywhere really. Um, nobody in the family is vaccinated. And she's being very cautious. So for her, by wearing masks when she, if she goes out shopping, this doesn't make a lot of difference, does it? See, from what we've already said, Janice, and the answer is, uh, this is not <laughs> people producing fear for different reasons. The mm. answer is the mask does not help. It'll, it only will help saliva. It will not help this vaccine. So the right. fact the mask does not give as much as, you know, back and forth in this whole situation. And of course, if you're outside, the, the pathogen, the virus is airborne, it just flies right by you. You know, it, it's minuscule. So the, the mask does not help in any, any way or form. In fact, when you're outside, there's more oxygen. The, the air is floating around there. You're one of the safest places to be in relation. Mm. Now, if you're inside and you're in a closed environment, Okay, 
and you do not, you, you know, there's a lot of toxin in our houses and so on, then yes, you could, there could be more exposure at that time. All right. That's so, the reason uh, I recommend air filters, HEPA filters, and ultraviolet light inside a house, because that's going to activate the oxygen. The, the, that HEPA filter is small enough to be able to filter out the pathogen, the virus, and also to be able to activate the ultraviolet light, which is the sunlight. The virus can't live in oxygen uh, or ozone, and that's our immune system, or the ozone that's actually activated from the ultraviolet light. Lovely. Well, thank you very much, Beth, for that. Environment. That's what you want to share with her, is filtering the air in her own environment. You want to make your home your sanctuary. You want to make your home where you live your own sanctuary. All right, so that's the reason you, you use the understanding of the HEPA filter, which is charcoal. You use the understanding of the UVC light, which is the, you know, what it does is the UV light sends out the negative ions, so the positive ions, which viruses live in that, drop down to the floor. That's how it works. Yeah. So, you know, you want, we remember inflammation, right, decay, and keeping the blood flowing. That's how you take care of the virus. Reduce the inflammation and keep the blood circulating. Those are the two areas that take care of any virus. So when you are able to sleep, then you're stimulating the parasympathetic nerves, you're, you're reducing inflammation. So like anyone with any sort of autoimmune condition, the first thing that needs to be addressed is the inflammation. Whether that inflammation is coming from stress, some sort of toxic house syndrome, all right, because that happens, people are renovating and living in their own homes, so that's toxic house syndrome. Whether that inflammation is coming from a physical trauma, like an injury, whether that inflammation is coming from some sort of shock or being exposed to a whole bunch of mold or fungus, we've got to remove the inflammation and keep the blood circulating. How you do that is you've got to make red blood cells. The two areas that manufacture the red blood cells from the amino acids are the liver and the bone marrow. That's where we make our red blood cells. So anytime we can reduce inflammation, that's the reason meditation, there's lots of research done on meditation and helping an individual's immune system. Because when you focus and you draw the energy in, you're drawing it into the pituitary to stimulate the thymus. You're drawing it into the pituitary to go up to the pineal gland. You're centering yourself, you're focusing and you're concentrating and you actually are slowing down your heartbeat. So again, meditation reduces inflammation. Doing a foot bath reduces inflammation. Doing an Epsom salt bath reduces inflammation. So the two things that take care of your immune response is to take care of the inflammation, like whether it's virus, fungus, mold, emotional, physical trauma, and make the red blood cells. That's great, Lorraine. That's, that's uh, all wrapped up in one little package there. Very lovely. Uh, and I agree with everything you've said, <laughs> meditation being, of course, very, uh, very uh, important as well. So uh, very quickly, so charcoal, which you're giving me and I have with the program, at this stage, do we take a little bit more or we just use that on our natural feeling whether I need a little bit more today or I don't need so much today? You always want to take it at night, okay, because when we sleep, that's when we remove the most carbon dioxide while we sleep. It's not when we're up running around, right, exercising, it's while we sleep. So you always want to take more at night, regardless. Everybody, you want to take the charcoal at night before bed. So right. you take one capsule or two capsules, because I know people say, oh, I take too much charcoal, I get constipated. It doesn't really constipate. It just, you know, there's not enough, you obviously haven't drunk enough liquid, and that's the reason you know, the charcoal is binding in your colon, and, you know, you're more you're not able to go as easily because you haven't drunk enough liquid. But you can fluctuate the amount of charcoal that you take at night. You know, you can take two capsules or you can take powder, quarter to a half a teaspoon, um, and take it at nighttime before bed. Now, the morning time, again, that's, you know, starting the day. Remember, like, in the morning when you break the fast from sleeping, you're flushing the tubes, right? 
you're clearing the mucus, right? You're, you're activating the liver and the bile from the liver to stimulate your digestive enzymes and hydrofolic acid. And then that speeds up the peristalsis action of your colon, which gets the toxin to move out, which Jeff shared about the villi needing to, you know, have the fluid, the roughage it needs, not, you know, all dried up, which then becomes a tube. All right, so the charcoal at that time is important as well. But again, you know, if you've gone out somewhere or, you know, you've been exposed to chemical, you think you might be, you know, fighting something, remember everybody, the tongue. Nature gave us these things as a way to actually know what's going on in our bodies. So your tongue, look at your tongue first thing in the morning. That's one thing that, you know, doctors used to once upon a time do is look at the tongue. Your tongue is a mapping of your digestive system. There's more blood on the tongue than anywhere else. So you want to get into a habit when you wake up in the morning to brush your teeth is look at your tongue. So if all of a sudden your tongue is more coated, if you actually start studying your tongue, you'll start to see when you're exposed to something because it'll go all white coated or it's really thick up the back of the tongue. So then yes, you'll need more charcoal. If it's, you know, nice and pink and there's maybe a little bit of white up the back, then you need less charcoal. So you start to utilize the tools that Mother Nature gave us to actually read what's going on in your, bo in your body. Right. That's great, Lorraine. Thank you. Also, when you're dealing with, let's say right now, they're, uh, you know, they're talking a lot and having people have to use a mask here like this. And when you're using the mask, what's happening is, is that you're reabsorbing your own carbon dioxide. Yes. Okay, and so obviously, if you're reabsorbing your own carbon dioxide, and you're getting less oxygen, then there's gonna be more infection and bacteria that you're reabsorbing. Nature did not intend for us to wear these things. Oh. At the same time, here in America, particularly in, for this whole year and a half, if you went inside to a supermarket or into Whole Foods or even a natural food store, you had to wear a mask and they were cleaning everything with chlorine. Ah, uh, yes. Yep, that's right, they are. Okay, exactly. So then they're not using hydrogen peroxide. No. <laughs> to yes, activate yes. oxygen and then the virus can't do that. And they're not putting it on our veggies that you're buying in that supermarket. It's in plastic wrapped up. So the situation there is that we are we are actually being more contaminated now because of the way they're trying to kill the virus by using chlorine, which is more chemical, which actually activates the virus more. And the poor people, particularly young people or athletes, they're being forced to run with this on. 800 meters, a young woman was running and she passed out at the final. I mean, it's, it's sad, sad, sad. No common sense at all. No common sense, no. And but, I think- but, that... it, but no, excuse me, just like, what is being activated, which is everything I want to teach, this reason faith, meditation is so important. Oh. And because you, you, we, right now we need more courage. Not f we have to reduce the fear, which is presented so much around us and we've had so much years and years of experience in understanding what viruses. We want to pass on our courage so you can gain more courage and reduce the fear. Yes. And that's why, as you said, Jeff, strong faith. Keep up our, yes. our strong faith. Most, you see, most and the other thing, too, see, if you're, if you're afraid and you don't have uh, a fear and you don't have a, a strong faith, if someone comes by you, this is what's happened so much, then they're so afraid that you're gonna give them the virus and they're gonna die. Yes. But if you have faith, okay, then you know that if you die, you're gonna go into heaven. So what is there to fear? Yes, I think the media all around the world uh, laps it up, makes it worse than what it actually is. And <laughs> to explain this, just so fearful <laughs> of getting this COVID that they're they're scared to even go near you. Yeah. Um, but in Australia, we're a little bit, you know, a little bit um, 
more outdoors people, so we're not so uh, afraid of those sorts of things. Well, um, see, you, you remember that you've been in summer. <laughs> yes, and we're now going in summer. We're going in summer here in, in the United States. So all of a sudden, yes, they said no more masks, no more. Don't have to have them inside or outside as long as you have the vaccine. Yes. <laughs> Awful. So they're using that because so many Americans now are not wanting to take the vaccine. So they're trying to say, look, you can have freedom and go to the sports and dance and go to church and whatever, as long as you have the vaccine. So do we still have to spray our shopping bags as they come in the door, do we? Have to do what? Spray our shopping bags. The shopping bags and that. You mean what we mean with the um, hydrogen peroxide? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, peroxide. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I don't. I use the hydrogen peroxide in our vegetables and like that, and in the counter, and I brush my yeah. teeth with it. That yeah. that's an individual thing. If you feel that, do it. Yeah. No, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Can be about anything. Doesn't have to be about what we're talking about. Can be about anything. All right, there we go. I unmuted you. Yeah, it's me again, Lorraine. Sorry, Ben oh, tonight. Good. Seeing nobody's talking, I thought I might as well grab the opportunity. Uh, the Ben tonight. I'm having a teaspoon of Ben tonight in the morning. Feeling good. So what is being shared about Ben tonight is bentonite is clay and that bentonite is a natural antibacterial, natural antibiotic. How is because when you drink the bentonite, it absorbs the bacteria, but it does not absorb the nutrients. So it actually absorbs the bacteria. Now, again, viruses produce bacteria and live off of bacteria. So, so therefore, the by taking right? It, will, it'll, it absorbs the bad bacteria. It'll leave the good bacteria. Like how people but, take, yeah. you know, probiotics, right, to go, which give you the good, you know, alkaline acid strains of, you know, good bacteria. The liquid bentonite is, is, is absorbing. It's absorbing the toxin. That's what it's doing. Yeah, it's absorbing the, the uh, bacteria that has infection and it removes it out of the body. And allows then the good bacteria to form wherever it's being down, utilized. Down under in Australia and New Zealand are moving into the shortest day of the year. You all want to be taking the liquid bentonite as a preventative right now. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon every morning is still enough. Well, it depends. If you're starting to get like a runny nose or that type of thing, or you're feeling chilled, then you want to take it morning and night. Okay, as night. a preventative once a day, like what you yeah. do, but um, increase it if you start to experience, you know, any symptoms of chills. Like and, nausea or anything like that. Yeah. Nausea, sore throat, runny nose, yeah. which is mm -hmm. a yeah. reminding you about your tongues, to look at your tongues. Thank you. Another question here. I thought I saw something come up. I think that might be Janice. Is that Janice? Oh, uh, Matt, uh, sorry, not Matt. Uh, Andy, did you want to ask or are you tired? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm still, still awake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I got one of these, uh, you know, the mats that you get for lying on with uh, like spikes in them, you know, like, well, they're not spikes, but um um so i just kind of wondered how much to use that if at all um 
Do you, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't know where in GDO, do you understand? It's like an acupuncturist net. Yeah, that's about the best. It's, it's like, like, wow. Is it like lying on a bed of nails? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. 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 You see, it's like an acupuncture. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have an answer to that other than if it's working on certain points, it would be beneficial. I don't, I don't have really an answer. Yeah. I mean, well, well, my experience of it was when I when I lay on the mat for, you know, obviously the first sort of couple of minutes, it's it's um, challenge challenging from a pain point of view. Um, but then what happens is obviously that there's a lot of heat, and then there's that feeling of um, um, how to explain it. You, you know, when you like if you have a cold shower or whatever, you get that uh, something that makes you laugh. So I, I had that with the with the mat. It, it got me to the point where I it was almost it was really funny to be to be lying on it. So there was obviously a, a reaction, um, and I remember well, sometimes in, sometimes Andy to release the stress or the pain, then the person will actually it'll you mm. know be laughing from from the the release of the pain. You have tension in the area usually is what yeah. There's a built up mm. nervous tension in the mm. area where ever those you know the mat is working on that pressure point the laughing is actually releasing that nerve tension that that's right held in the muscle in that part of the of the body mm. yep that's the reason i said to you there's so you've got to find a balance you see yeah yeah you don't want to do it where you overstimulate right mm. you do it where yes it did help relieve your back you always want to start slowly when you introduce something new you always want to start slowly and then slowly for two weeks to a month, right? Mm -hmm. you don't know exactly whether it's actually helping you or, you know, it's overstimulating and causing inflammation. But it's yeah. like an acupuncturist, you know, pressure points. You know, obviously there's areas where, you know, your spine is introverted, you know, extrovert, you know, posterior, anterior is the word, right? And so that's where the, the little needles, you know, will press in on that area. And then mm. the of the, in the muscles and the connective tissue in that area that comes off the spine and the nerves that feed that muscle and that tendon as the needles are moving in or pressing in on that area to relieve the tension, then the pain subsides, you see? Mm -hmm. It's like, a, you know, when you put a needle in there and they twirl it, it's relieving, it's, it's working on the nerve meridian and it's increasing the energy flow in that area. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, Peter, I'm just unmuting you here. Could you? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Lorraine. Hi. Uh, Hi, Peter. Just, just a quick Good to hear your voice, Peter. Hi. I, I, um, Heard you say that uh, to take the liquid bentonite, and I just came across a pair. I was wondering if it's just as effective as using the liquid. The, the answer is, is that yes, it can be just as effective. Uh, it just depends upon your dilution of the powder, where right. when you buy the liquid bentonite, it's filtered, it's, you know, it's easy to assimilate. So you just have to make sure when you have the actual powder itself, that it's it's more in a liquid form, you know, it's more diluted. Well, what, what, okay. the, the same, sorry, the same with the charcoal. Um, sometimes it's difficult to get in the tablets or the capsules. And I had a look online, and we found some uh, powdered, but we wasn't sure whether it was the same to use. Uh, oh, as far as the charcoal, Peter, the answer is absolutely. A lot of people will just take the charcoal out of the capsule and put it in the liquid. You see, in the form of the sort of liquid. And the reason is just it's messy. Other people take the charcoal just because it's again messy. They take it in the capsule form. It's always better, you know, in the powdered form in the liquid. Always. Yeah. Oh, good. Because um, we usually take the the tablets. Um, they seem to uh, absorb better. I don't, I'm not sure. They seem the, to work. Be more effective. The in the capsules. If we. Oh, in the, the capsules. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I understand. You mentioned tablet. I was just going to say tablet is actually compressed and that, that just moves straight through. But when you take the capsule, it, it just releases in your tummy and then the powder goes into your intestine. I mean, the lick, yeah, exactly. Like so that. that's much better. So yeah, it just depends. I mean, honestly, um, any, any way that works for you between the capsule, you know, like I take the capsule, Lynn and Sally take the powder. Yeah. You know. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Lorraine. What were you going to say? I was going to say with the um, clay, you want to soak it, like leave it in water overnight. So you want to oh. you know, take a teaspoon of the clay fill your cup up with water, put a sauce, you know, like a saucer on top so nothing falls in the cup, leave mm. it to soak overnight, and then drink the top of the water. Leave the clay at the bottom. Don't stir it in, okay? Just mm. the, um, leave the clay at the bottom and just drink the top part of the liquid. See, when the clay is sitting like curtain whey, when the clay is actually sitting in the cup, the actual minerals are floating to the surface. Okay. okay, the nutrients okay. are floating to the surface, and that's what you want. Yeah. And that's well, what they're doing when you get drinking the, the bottle that's already done. That's exactly how they did it. That's how what I just said. Okay, well, I'm, I'm using the liquid. I've got the liquid now. I just came across it and was just wondering, you know, uh, what the difference was. Well, well, it's a good question because well, Lorraine just explained how they do it in the bottle and, and how yeah. to take it when you have the powder itself, leave it overnight and let the minerals go to the surface. Yeah, the only time we ever used the, the powders when we're traveling because we can take it away um, in the liquid form. It's, um, it's difficult. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Great, Thank Peter. You. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Did you have another question, Janice? Did you have another question, Janice? Okay, anyone else have anything to ask? I Are you there, Lorraine? Yes, yes, I'm here, Janice. Did you have another uh, question? Yes. Uh, in the morning, okay, I have my teaspoon of my bentonite. Uh, what's the period of time before I have my first drink, whether it be a stress formula or a morning drink? What do you suggest, Jeff? I mean, I, 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 can, I usually drink my powder straight away. You know, like I, if I have the bentonite, I'll drink the um, amino acids, you know, the formulas, you know, five minutes later. I don't, Absolutely. Know, it's not going to absorb, you know, it's, it's not going to absorb the powders, you know, it's not going to absorb the nutrients from your formulas. It's just that I'm a bit full. Well, that's a different wait, story. Wait, no, that's a different story. Just, just, just wait maybe a half hour then. Right, if that's yeah. enough time, you know, drink the bentonite, yeah. wait a half hour, and then take your uh, amino acids. Good. Good. For, for me, the, the answer to what we're saying is the minerals actually will work with the amino acids that we're taking, like sort of the bentonite. So being taken right after another is absolutely balanced and fine. For myself, when I take the amino acids, as soon as they go in my mouth, I have to go to the toilet. They move right through immediately. So that it actually cleans out my prostate, urine, kidneys, and like that, it just flushes all the way through, which is of course really, really good. Oh, very clean machine there, Jeff, very clean. Well, when you've done this for so long, it's, it, it, it stays, stays, you know, it's just like you, when you clean something more often, the debris doesn't get stuck in there. So yep. that's, that's the good. idea. That's right, exactly right. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap up, Lorraine. Great, well, thank you everyone for spending the time with us today. And um, we feel it's important to support everybody in these times as we're, everyone's sharing what the pressures that we're all under and the, the two sides of what's happening in the world right now with vaccinations and non-vaccinations. So we're here with you if you need any support or any help at all, we're here for you. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for your time.
And thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And strong faith, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, thank Jeff. Jane. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all very yeah. much Thanks, for Thanks, your everybody. patience. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye. Thanks. Night-night. Night-night. <laughs>